Hello and welcome to the video. This video is a series, the first in a series that an awful lot of you have been asking for, and that is about putting Ardu Pilot onto something like this. Now, this is a pretty regular flight controller. This is actually an Omnibus F4, F4 Pro. It's the V3 edition. And an Ardu Pilot is something that I use an awful lot. Ardu Pilot is the family name of the software, but there's Ardu Copter for uh, multi rotors, there's Ardu Plane, Ardu Rover, Ardu Sub, and there's loads of different variants that you can actually put on different models. But until now, you've had a pretty limited choice of hardware. You either had the APM, which has been, really been retired now for about three years, 8 bit technology, very long in the tooth. Still have lots of people messaging me using it. Uh, my advice would be don't. Uh, if you're going to use Ardu Pilot these days, if you want a cheap and cheerful implementation, I'd probably go for something like this now. Or the more modern option is to use a Pixhawk, either regular Pixhawk, like everyone knows and loves, or the new Pixhawk Cube that I've been building with the past couple of models. And that tends to go in the very big models. Now, in the video I did a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the fact that RD Pilot was a very safe, stable, uh, very reliable technology, but it didn't do on-screen displays. But I did in that video mention that if you put it on something like this, then it did. So this series is all about how to get RD Pilot onto here. So let me very quickly talk about why you might you want to use RD Pilot over something like iNav. Those of you that watch the channel regularly will know that iNav is something that I put in an awful lot of planes. And iNav is a fantastic system. It's pretty solid now. Uh, I've been using it back since the days of 1.3 or 1.4. I think we're on 2.1 now. Every time it comes out, it's getting better and better. Um, but compared to the amount of investment that's gone into the Ardu Pilot software, iNav is very much in the catch-up phase. Ardu Pilot was originally funded pretty much full-time by 3DR. Now, that support ended probably three or four years ago now, uh, but there has been literally millions of hours of flight time by hundreds of thousands of pilots put through the Ardu Pilot code. So the fact that they've now ported it to run on these kind of boards is great. And if you run it on these, you also get an on-screen display, which is brilliant. Because until now, if you wanted an on-screen display with RD Pilot, something like a Pixhawk, you had to mess about with minim on-screen displays, and I've done that in the past, and it's just painful. So in this video, I'm just really going to get the software onto here and show you how to do that, because it's not as complicated as it appears. The reason that I've waited this long to do a series is because this is a part of RD Pilot that has been changing very rapidly as the implementations changed. And some of the software um, in RD Pilot and the way it's built has been changing as well, which meant that it's easier to port to these things. So rather than you have to be a bit of a code head and download bits and bytes and hexadecimal and compile stuff, it's pretty much all ready to go. So if you know how to flash something uh, aboard in Betaflight or iNav, uh, and apologies for the aircraft noise, we've got the window open because it's a warm morning and uh, we're under the flight path for Manchester Airport this morning. So you'll hear lots of airplanes. It's I'm, I'm not recording this by a, uh, by a runway, but it sometimes feels like it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and actually put the software on here, go through the process and show you how easy it is. The following videos then we'll put this in a model, we'll set it up and we'll actually get it flying. I'll show the on-screen display. Hopefully in, in the future, the on-screen display setup pieces in Ardu Pilot will improve. At the moment, it's a little bit old school where you have to kind of put X, Y coordinates. Uh, but once you've set it up once, you can kind of copy and paste that, those settings to the other boards. Um, but I think it's the code has developed enough now for me to make the series and for it not to be obsolete in two weeks. So there are an awful lot of hardware choices when it comes to the hardware now that you want to run Ardu Pilot on. Now here is the website. I'm going to put links to all the things I'm going to show here down at the bottom. So if you're interested, you can go and have a look at this yourself. But you can see here there's the omnibus boards. There's uh, the Kakutes from Hollybro. There's the SpeedyB boards. There's loads of stuff on here. And if you're using one of these boards, then it's as simple as downloading the hex file and then using the flasher in something like iNav or Betaflight to flash the code onto the board. And then you can plug it into Mission Planner and away you go. 
Now this board that I have here is the Omnibus F4 Pro. Um, I have uh, taken the unusual step of actually soldered the pins onto this already. I knew this board was good. Um, I've done something a bit wacky with the pins, let me show you. Uh, by default, there are two things that you have to do with this particular board. And the cool thing is in the in the wiki, in the documentation for RD Pilot, which has always been excellent, it shows you the things you need to do. One is to remove a little uh, resistor or diode in, on the board which stops the 5 volts going to the output rails um, I have actually soldered all of the 5 volt pins together for the throttle aileron elevator and rudder outputs so that means that that's going to work I don't need to worry about that I will keep the 5 volts on the rails to power my receiver and the only other bit of soldering I've had to do on here on these V3 boards there's a little jumper for SBUS or PPM and I've just soldered that so I'm going to use a little uh, XSR or little FR Sky receiver to actually run this. Because my thought is, I'm actually going to put RD Plane on this. We could put RD Copter, RD Rover, we could put anything on here. But I'm tempted to actually put RD Plane and stick it in a little flying wing just to test it out. Scrolling down on the page for the board that you're interested in, you will find the link to the software. Clicking on there, you'll find the directory structures, and I would go for the latest version that's in the stable directory. Now, in there, you'll find the different versions for RD Plane, RD Copter, and you want to download the one that ends in the underscore bl.hex extension because there are two versions of the code for the board. One is if you've already flashed the board once with the bootloader version and you are going to update it in something like Mission Planner and that's the one without the underscore BL in the name and the other one is the one that we actually want. So right click, select save as and just save it onto your computer and that is going to be the firmware that we're going to use in something like iNav or Betaflight. Plug the board into iNav and Betaflight and flash it as normal but this time load the file that you've just downloaded and then make sure you've got full chip array selected and click load the software and click load firmware. If it doesn't immediately work, then use the same tricks that we always do with things like Zadig. Again, I'll put a link in the description down to my Zadig video that shows you how to use it. Then it'll start flashing and it takes a little bit longer to flash than most Betaflight or iNav boards. So just sit with it. It'll take probably a couple of minutes so now we have the software on here. Setup starts to get an awful lot easier. Now, because it's got the bootloader installed on here, if we wanted to, we could load custom firmware inside Mission Planner and we could reflash another version of the RD Pilot code on here. We'd have to download it again from that repository and uh, still look, flash the custom firmware, but because it's got the bootloader, Mission Planner can talk to it. Or you can flash the new version with the underscore bl.hex uh, ending onto this using iNav or Betaflight. I find for those you just have to press and hold the DFU button and then you can just flash it as normal. Uh, for those of you that might ask, once you've done this to a board, if you have one of these spare and you want to have a play, uh, you can very easily get back to Betaflight or iNav. Again, it's just the same process as a standard flash. I'd probably just press and hard boot it into the bootloader, plug it into iNav or Betaflight and flash it as normal. So once the board has got the software on, so we can start the wizard and we can go through things like calibration of the accelerometer. But before we come back into the next video and carry on with the process, we're actually going to wire this up. So join me in the next video where we'll connect in the receiver, we'll connect in the GPS and the I2C connections for things like the compass and the GPS itself. And then we'll come back and we'll go through the calibration routine and we'll complete the setup. Then in the following video, we can actually look into installing this thing into a plane and starting to get it flying. But hopefully, for those of you that are interested in this, that's dispelled some of the myths. Uh, it's actually relatively easy to get RD Pilot onto a little board like this. And once it's on there, then you pretty much have access to all of the RD Pilot goodness that we know and love running it on Pixhawks. But now we can stick it on a £20 board and we're going to get an OSD. So join me in the next video where we'll continue the setup and hopefully in three or four videos time we'll have this thing inside a little 600mm wing flying around doing all that RD Pilot coolness.
Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.